because this is not where the work is going to come from. I go to meetings, I le learn about how the United States is now a mature economy. Oh, watch out when that adjective gets thrown at you. <laughs> it's never a good sign. A mature economy means one that isn't growing anymore. So corporations are being advised, focus on the world, the parts of the world that are growing, where your market will expand, where you can participate in growth and therefore see rising profits and do well. And the United States isn't that place. Uh-oh. Then why pay taxes here? To enable the government to, to do what? Work real hard to take care of a population you don't care about it's not your future. It's over. We are living in a period of American history that is very strange. We're, it's over, but we are all, even those of us in this room, engaged in a massive, a massive process of denial. Nor is it surprising. <laughs> Nor, nor is it surprising. Who would want to face the implications of what I'm telling you? Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you down. <laughs> Denial is an understandable reaction to a difficult reality. Always has been. You know that from your own personal life. Think about it. So what do you do? What do you do, how do you handle a situation like this as a society? Since 1995, the top 1% have captured nearly 20 times more of the global wealth than the bottom 50% of humanity. During the Occupy Wall Street encampments and protests happening in cities all around the world in the fall of 2011, the messages of this inequality, which included, we are the 99%, were received very favorably by millions of people worldwide. This core message was also the main part of the inspiration for the very popular movement of two presidential campaigns of progressive and self-proclaimed democratic socialist Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont, who was the only candidate attracting tens of thousands of supporters all around the United States to rallies even in more conservative states during the Democratic Party's primary season from 2015 to early 2016. While some will say the outcomes of the Democratic Party primaries in 2016 and the general elections in 2016 and 2020 were decided democratically, there are many who also feel that all of these outcomes are debatable and that the democratic process was somehow rigged. During Donald Trump's presidency, he lowered the already low tax rate on the richest U.S. Americans, which was 39.6% originating during the Bush II era, down to 21%. The world's richest 1% now have more than twice as much wealth as 6.9 billion people on the planet. The CARES Act here in the United States in 2020 gave trillions of dollars to the owners of essential businesses in the United States alone due to the pandemic lockdowns. From March 2020 to November 2021, the wealth of the 10 richest men, including Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Jeff Bezos has doubled while the incomes of 99% of humanity are worse off because of COVID-19. This was the largest transfer of wealth to the top in history. In part four, Professor Richard Wolff talks more about worker cooperatives, their history and how more cooperative enterprises being created in our world are a major part of the solutions to this massive wealth and income inequality that has been created in our global economic system over time.